everyone and welcome back to Morgborg Tech. I am back from my four week long break. That is how long it has been approximately since my last video, which just so happens to follow into this video. This is the update on my two previous phone lots and I'm combining them of course into one. So this is a 20 piece phone lot update made from two 10-piece phone lots and unfortunately not too many of these work these are the working phones only nine of them and the other 11 are either untested or broken so without any further ado let's get right into this starting with this phone here this is an lg cu 500 on at&t and excuse the weird lighting that is from the sun outside. Also a warning, this phone's startup is going to be very loud. Moving on to the next phone, this is a Kyocera Energy on Cricut. I actually have another one of these on TELUS, which I'm pretty sure I stated in one of the phone lot unboxing videos. Sorry about that, I bumped the tripod. Up next here is a Samsung SCH-N330 on Altel, and I'm pretty sure this is the only Samsung SCH series phone where the model begins with the letter N. So we've seen stuff like SCH-U, whatever, and SCH-R, stuff like that, and even SCH-I, but nothing else I can think of right off with SCH-N. These buttons here on the side pop up the full display. Moving on to the next phone, this is a Samsung Snap on Altel, just like the previous phone. Unfortunately, the startup sound got cut off there. Here's the fifth phone here. This is a Samsung SGHD 357 on singular. Now I'm not going to turn this one on because I'm sure the battery has zero juice in it because this is actually a bad battery, but I'll just tell you what happens when I plug this in and turn it on. 
it will die essentially so when I try to turn it on because of the battery the phone will cut out because the battery has very little power in it but otherwise it works perfectly fine moving on here this is a pretty interesting phone and actually one of the main reasons I got one of the phone lots this is an LG AX490 on Altel aka the race car phone because it looks like a race car this kind of theme was going on with this phone because of the fast tap keyboard and you know fast so they made this phone everything themed fast actually one of the options for the startup animation is a race car That is not the default animation though, so I did not use it. Moving on, here's the Sanyo PM8200 on Sprint. Nothing much to say about this other than the fact that I already have one. So I might end up selling this one or the other one. Moving on, here's a Sanyo VI2300 on Sprint in this green color. This phone had an antenna on it, but it was severely damaged from what I want to assume was probably dog bites. So a dog probably got to the antenna on this phone and I thought it was just an eyesore. So I unscrewed it and removed it and it's going to stay like that. Compared to my other VI2300, which I did a retro unboxing of just about two years ago, this phone here actually uses the old Sprint branding and animations. Pretty cool, so now I have one VI2300 with each branding. Here's the last working phone. This is a Samsung SGH A107 on AT&T. There's some, what I assume is some sort of sticker or tape residue on the back that I did not clean up. I'm not sure I ever will, but if I have some extra time, I'll get to that. Very basic phone from what you might see because there is no external display and the internal display is very tiny and pixelated. This was a Go phone back in the day and I believe it probably cost only like $30 or something. I do not know for sure but I'm assuming it is a very cheap phone from probably about 2010. All right, so now let's move on to the untested phones in this lot. All right, so here are the untested phones, eight of them. These three on top, I was able to have signs of life out of, and these five here, I could not test whatsoever. So let's start with this here. This is an AudioVox CDM 8910. 
I don't know what carrier this is on, unfortunately. I'm going to assume probably Altel or some sort of, uh, I guess, Obama phone or a prepaid carrier from, like, the government. But anyway, this one shows signs of life. It's kind of yellowed, so it's not in the best shape. Otherwise, cool looking phone, no battery, obviously. Next here is a Samsung SCH A650 on Verizon. I plugged this in using the proprietary Samsung charger and it showed signs of life. It said insert battery. And so it might look like it has a battery, but it actually baffled me when I was unboxing this lot. Someone actually cut out the battery pack, so it's just the plastic casing. So this phone does not have a battery. Next up here is a Kyocera SE44 on Altel. No battery, and I would have to most likely buy the battery for this one online because it is a proprietary battery. Uses the same chargers as LG phones from the era. So I was able to plug it in and it shows signs of life. Moving on to the ones that I couldn't test at all, here's Samsung SGH A437 on AT&T. Now, reason why it's untested, no battery, and reason why I couldn't get any life out of this one is because of this charger port here, and it's actually, actually looks like one that I would have, but this is the, the small Samsung charger, like small, small, so this one here is completely unknown to me, at least of its condition. I'd like to think that this one works, but at the same time, phone is quite beat up and scuffed. Next up, here's a phone that I was really hoping I'd be able to get to work, but unfortunately I couldn't because I don't have a charger for it. This is a Samsung SCH8500 on Sprint. This is actually a really old Samsung phone back before they put letters in the last part of the model number. So this is SCH and just four numbers instead of a letter and three numbers. Here's Pantech Breeze 2 on AT&T. Same condition as my other Breeze 2, which I got years ago. No battery, no charger. And here's the next untested phone. This is a uh, AudioVox CDM9100 on Altel, and this one I do not have the charger for, and the battery I cannot connect to my battery charger because of that connector right there. Here's the last untested phone. This is a Sony Ericsson Z500A on singular. I do not have the battery for this one, and when I plugged it in, it did not show any signs of life. So those are the untested phones, and now I will show you the three remaining broken phones. Now here are the three broken phones from these two lots. Starting with here, this is a Samsung Solstice on AT&T. This actually was the first phone I tested, and it turns on and works, except the touch screen is broken, so I can't use this thing. Therefore, it is broken. It's, an, it's unfortunate because it would have been one of my only Samsung Java phones on AT&T. Next up here is a Samsung SGH X427 on Singular. This phone, when I plug it in, it does not turn on, unfortunately. Same issue with this phone here. This is an LG F7200 on Singular. As you can see right there, F7200. This phone is most likely water damaged because of that strong red indicator. But this one did not turn on. So yeah, that concludes my break. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And make sure to stay tuned for my next upload as I plan to make it something very special and something different. I'm looking forward 
for you all to be able to see that. It might be a few weeks because it's going to be a pretty big project. And yeah, peace.